support me on Patreon so I can keep my lights on. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk, and I do not accept the responsibility. Oh, do we have something good today. Something that is so diabolical, yet smells so good that people will be kicking down your doors for it. FBI, open up! And is totally not a List 1 chemical that is not used in any illicit production of chemicals. It is benzaldehyde, boys and girls. It's actually used in perfumes, flavors and extracts, and a couple other possibilities. Though today's possibilities are gonna be a lot more legal. So first thing that we're gonna need is some hexamine. Hexamine can be found in these fuel tablets that I found at the store, and they're actually pretty much pure hexamine. I didn't have a giant amount of benzoyl chloride for this reaction, so I had to adjust everything to about 71.4% of the original amount. So we're gonna use about 32.13 grams of hexamine. I then tried to put the hexamine into a round bottom flask, but I was kind of stupid and I got it caught in the neck. I ran to go get some tweezers and I slowly chipped at it until it finally went into the flask. I'm not really sure why I decided to put it in exactly like that instead of crushing it up, but I actually did end up crushing up all of them and then slowly putting the powder in. Is it me or does that kind of look like crack cocaine? Now I'm not saying I've ever done it, and I'm also not saying that I wouldn't ever do it, but it kind of looks like it. Now we need to make a 60% ethanol solution. So we're first going to measure out 57.12 milliliters of ethanol, and we're gonna put this into another beaker to mix with some distilled water. It's important to know that I used basically anhydrous ethanol when I made the solution, so if you didn't, you would have to adjust the percentages for that. We're then gonna measure out about 39.27 milliliters of distilled water, and we're gonna add that into our ethanol solution. I tend to have a very heavy hand when I pour things, so I had to dump a little bit of it out, and I got about about 39 milliliters. As you can see, I dump it in and I swirl the flask around. We're then gonna add the solution into the hexamine and the round bottom flask. You don't need to pour slow or anything like that and it can just be dumped all in. We always swirl the flask for dramatic effect. It's very wizardly when you do it. Now I got lazy and I decided to use a stir plate with a stir bar and I mixed the solution together. Next, we're going to add 25 milliliters of benzoyl chloride, also known as the worst existing substance in this entire world. Luckily, I was not crying and huffing this in when I poured it in, and it actually worked out pretty well. Anyway, we're gonna set up a hot water bath now, and we're using water because we used ethanol. If we used another medium, like acetic acid and water, then we would probably have to use an oil bath, but since we opted to go with ethanol, a hot water bath is totally fine. I should also note that a 50% acetic acid solution could also be used instead of ethanol. We're then gonna add the benzoyl chloride and we're gonna set it up for a reflux and we're gonna reflux for about two hours. Here's what my setup looks like and it's really important to make sure that ice is always added into your circulating water just because this will get pretty warm. Here's what it looks like from above and I actually added a small piece of saran wrap to make sure none of the fumes come out. Here's my stir and heat settings in case you're wondering. And here's what it looks like before it boils. Once the water starts boiling, you can see the reflux is starting to happen now. This part of the reflux should be done for about two hours. Occasionally, I had to add water into the boiling apparatus just to make sure that we didn't run out. On the next clip, you can actually see the saran wrap, and I think now is a good time to go over the mechanism. I've got the mechanism for this reaction in two different places, one being a YouTube video that I'll link in the description, and two is Name Reactions by Z. Jack Lee, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. The first part of the reaction is a SN2 reaction where the hexamine is a nucleophile and chlorine is the leaving group. This creates a hexaminium intermediate. This then goes through hydride transfer and a ring opening of the hexamine. Just to note that the hydride transfer and ring opening of the hexamine may occur in a synchronized fashion. This is then hydrolyzed when it comes into contact with water. The chloride ion then deprotonates one of the hydrogens on the positively charged oxygen. Also, I forgot to mention that the acid is actually a catalyst in this, specifically for the hydrolysis. The nitrogen yanks the hydrogen off and a carbonyl group is formed. It also ejects whatever that's called and our benzaldehyde is now formed. We also have a product that's not normally mentioned. Now we're gonna add a 10% HCl solution to the mixture. Now the reason for this is really just to act as a catalyst and to make sure that we have a lot of H positive protons. Now I added this slowly, though I really don't think it needs to be just because it's pretty simple. 
This is then refluxed for about 15 to 20 more minutes. Once you're done, you can take the apparatus off of the hot water and you can let it cool to room temperature. When the acid was added, you can see that we have a nice fog in the round bottom flask. Now, this part of the procedure, it kind of pissed me off, and here's why. Now, I should have seen two different layers, the bottom layer being a light orange and the top layer being a yellow to orange. The top layer should be our benzaldehyde. Even Stevie Wonder can see that there is no color change in any of these layers. And yes, there is two separate layers. If you look from the bottom, you can see a small line separating the two liquids. What I then did next is set up for a steam distillation as I can bring over the water, ethanol, and benzaldehyde. The procedure says to take two different fractions, one being all the way up to about 98 to 100 degrees Celsius, and then everything else that collects over after that. Now, what I decided to do was take only the up to 98C portion. The only reason I did this was because I knew I would only have ethanol, water, and the benzaldehyde. What I find really cool is you can see the benzaldehyde coming over with the water and ethanol mixture. If you see in this next slide, you can see the benzaldehyde slowly come down in those small little beads down the condenser. You're going to stop when the beads of benzaldehyde stop coming over and you know that your distillation is done. The procedure says to do it differently, but I have a lot of problems with this procedure and I'll tell you exactly why. However, I want to show you the benzaldehyde dropping into the ethanol and water mixture, as I think is actually pretty cool. So when you see the benzaldehyde go, it actually goes to the bottom. Benzaldehyde is more dense than water, and it's more dense than ethanol. Now the problem that I have is within the procedure, it says that the benzaldehyde is going to be on top. Here, you can see the benzaldehyde that is on top. However, it's in a solution that the benzaldehyde is actually less dense than that solution. When I got everything in the receiving flask, I put it into a separation funnel, and it has this milky white substance to it. Now you'll see when I fully pour everything into it, that the benzaldehyde slowly makes its way to the bottom. And this is why the procedure really threw me off, because it says the aqueous layer is going to be on the bottom. I found this to be absolutely false, and I was cramming my head into the wall because I couldn't figure out why they said that. And I'm glad that I did not discard the bottom layer. I was even talking to one of my professors at my school on why this procedure sucked and that I'm going to do it my own way. And she also gave me some pretty good advice about how to proceed with the actual procedure. So what I did is I drained the bottom organic layer and I discarded the upper aqueous layer. I re-added the benzaldehyde into the separation funnel and I washed with some water. It's important to not wash with a lot of water as benzaldehyde is slightly soluble in water. It's then washed two or three times and we're going to always collect the bottom organic layer. With each water wash, you're actually going to shake the container and make sure that everything is thoroughly mixed together. Now you will create a small emulsion and it does take quite a long time to go down. You can see here, this is actually 500 times sped up and you can see exactly how slow it is. Now what I figured out is that you can actually use a vibrating like instrument to get the emulsion to go down. I actually learned this from Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia where the guy used the dildo to break the emulsion. You can see the benzaldehyde slowly drop in those droplets all the way down into the organic layer. And I actually thought this was a really, really cool technique and I will definitely be using this in the future. This is basically the cheap and poor way of doing it. It's then dried with anhydrous magnesium sulfate and we're just trying to pull out any extra water that's in there. It may also have a little bit of ethanol in there, and that's why we have to do another distillation. However, this distillation needs to be a vacuum distillation. And the reason for that is benzaldehyde will decompose in the presence of oxygen, and we're not trying to have that happen. Unfortunately, I did not have small, round bottom boiling flasks, and I had to call up my friend Jeff Bezos and order some on Amazon. That's why you can see me filling up these vials, just so we don't have any more auto-oxidation from leaving it out in the air. You could do a normal distillation for it, but you will risk the decomposition and you would probably get a smaller yield from it. Amazon has been such a major supplier of like all the chemicals I have. Amazon is a menace. They just sell you anything. Anyway, when they arrived, I poured all of the benzaldehyde into the flasks and I got ready for a vacuum distillation. I don't show it on camera, but I do put a stir bar in just to avoid bumping. Here's what my vacuum distillation looks like, and I'm actually using a Claisen head adapter instead of a normal one, just because in case it bumps, which it will, it won't actually go into the tube. Here, when I turn on the vacuum, you can see some bubbling start to happen. 
that can just be any gas that's in there and it's slowly coming out. Now, the interesting part about it is when I turned the vacuum on and left it run, it actually cleared up my solution all the way and it was basically pure from there. At least that's what it looked like. Now, you're normally gonna want to run the vacuum before you apply any heating and you're gonna make sure that all the bumping stops before you do it. Again, I just wanna show you how clear the solution got after I turned the vacuum on. And this is before applying any heat. I still don't understand why. If someone can explain, put it in the comments, please. The solution is wrapped in aluminum foil to help insulate the entire thing. Now, the reason for the vacuum distillation is purely because we're trying to lower the boiling point of benzaldehyde. Now, what I was planning to do was take the ethanol and water fraction, which would come over first, discard that, and then collect the pure benzaldehyde. Yes, this was going to be tedious, and I'd have to stop the vacuum, take it out, and then do it again. However, I only got a pure product of benzaldehyde. I actually saw on PubChem that benzaldehyde would come over around, I think it was like 60 to 63 degrees Celsius when it was pulled under a good vacuum. Mine actually came exactly at that temperature, and you can see the pure benzaldehyde dripping into the flask. I'm not really sure how it worked, but I got it. We can also see that the liquid is very refractive, and this is a pretty good sign that we have benzaldehyde. Not only does it look good, but it smells good. It smells like this cherry almond extract, and it smells heavenly. The distillation was stopped when the boiling flask barely had anything left in it, and you can see the beautiful refractive liquid in the flask. It's important to let the boiling flask cool before you turn off the vacuum. Once it's cooled, then you can turn off the vacuum, and then you can depressurize the system. Here's this cool clip of me turning it off. The way that we're going to depressurize is through the Claisen head adapter, and we're going to slowly take the air out. Once you depressurize, you can then take the flask with the benzaldehyde and use that. Here you can see a drop of water that is from my condenser, actually. I didn't clean it properly, and I thought it was fully dry, but it wasn't. I actually just sucked it out with a pipette. Anyway, here's the yield that we got, and we got about 12.5 to 13 milliliters. I then put it into a fresh file and I sealed it up. This synthesis was actually really, really interesting and I got to use a very unique reaction that you don't normally see in glasses. Now the question is, what am I gonna do with the benzaldehyde? Well, I can leave that up to your imagination. I just wanna thank everyone for watching and to please subscribe just because we wanna make this the fastest growing chemistry channel on here.